We woke this morning to the city wreathed in swathes of rain and it struck me that when a great poet dies the very territory that they wrote of and wrote out of, the territory that made them, also feels the grief of their passing. With Ivan Boland she had a lifelong relationship in her work, in her poetry, in her slant on the rest of the globe and the cosmos and it was Dublin. It came from her desire to root into this city of her birth. Um, I thought to remember her I would read a couple of extracts from one of her great poems, her Ars Poetica, a poem that sets out what she wants to do in poetry, what she wants to make of her life in poetry and what she hopes she leaves in poetry for us. Um, behind me here on the wall you'll see a photograph of Anna Liffey, uh, the goddess who names our river, the Liffey, that runs through the centre of the city. Her love of the river, her love of water, the fluidity, the, change, the changing face of the river is scribed all over her poetry. This central poem, which is like the river in the centre of the city, it is the poem in the centre of her work, written in her late 40s. And you will see the head of Anna Liffey, which is carved in granite on the old Carlisle Bridge, the present day O'Connell Street Bridge. And there she is, Anna Liffey. I always thought that she looked very like the young Ivan Boland. This is her own photograph. It's coloured in, in the Dublin colours, by my sister, the painter and artist Antoinette Milne. And myself and Jodie Allen Randolph, Ivan's great friend and her biographer, chose this Ivan's own image uh, for the cover of this book and it's called um, the book uh, which came out to celebrate her 70th birthday five years ago uh, is called A Poet's Dublin and we chose all of the poems of Dublin that she'd written, poems of her childhood, of her teenage years, of her student life, of her life as a young poet uh, and of her life out in Dundrum, in the new house, in the new estate, under the shadow of the mountain. So this is an extract from her great poem, Anna Liffey. I praise the gifts of the river, its shiftless and glittering retelling of the city, its clarity as it flows in the company of runt flowers and herons around a bend at Island Bridge and under 13 bridges to the sea, its patience at twilight, swans nesting by it, neon wincing into it. Maker of places, remembrances, narrate such fragments for me. One body, one spirit, one place, one name, the city where I was born, the river that runs through it, the nation which eludes me. Fractions of a life it has taken me a lifetime to claim. I came here in a cold winter. I had no children no country. I did not know the name for my own life. My country took hold of me. My children were born. I walked out in a summer dusk to call them in. One name, then the other, the beautiful vowels sounding out home. Make of a nation what you will. Make of the past what you can. There is now a woman in a doorway. It has taken me all my strength to do this, becoming a figure in a poem, usurping a name and a theme. A river is not a woman. 
although the names it finds, the history it makes and suffers, the Viking blades beside it, the muskets of the redcoats, the flames of the four courts blazing into it are a sign. Any more than a woman is a river, although the course it takes through swans courting and distraught willows, its patience, which is also its powerlessness from calorie to island bridge and from source to mouth is another one. And in my late forties, past believing love will heal what language fails to know and needs to say, what the body means. I take this sign and I make this mark, a woman in the doorway of her house, a river in the city of her birth, the truth of a suffered life, the mouth of it.